All right, everyone, so welcome back to Lost Judgment. We we're picking up where we left off, looking for Gomez Jewel. And what it looks like is uh, the game kind of auto save near the end. We did make it to Gomez Jewel last time, and I did a manual save, but the game didn't really save it. So I guess what we're doing now, we're going to Gomez Jewel manually. We have to go back over there to find it again and then start it up. I don't know why the save didn't really like save the way that it usually does. Uh, it's probably because we were in the midst of a story mission. Usually, I don't save in the middle of a story mission. I'll finish up the mission, and then I'll save in the open world. We didn't do that last time. So, if you remember, we're on the heels of Kawana. Kawana is supposedly hiding out in Gomajul. We're trying to find him. Um, because if you remember, what's going on right now is that the, key, the, the RK gang is still looking for him. Our guess is the reason is because Kawana worked with a politician to get revenge... For her son, her son was bullied. It was the original kid from this this story, who in the past was bullied at his high school, um, and ended up committing trying to commit suicide, but instead became crippled, paralyzed, and uh, and basically the politician has always been upset about this and tried to get revenge. Kawana contacted the politician. Apparently, they worked together to get revenge on the killer. But now, apparently, the politician is trying to to, to basically rub out Kawana. Maybe to, to, to hide any evidence that this had ever taken place so that they can never be implicated in this heinous act. So. This is not working out, this map. Hold on. We need to cross. I guess we can cross over here. Um, so that's what we're thinking. And so we're still on the on looking for Kawana. Maybe we'll find him tonight. Maybe we won't. I guess we're going to have to see what happens over in Gomajul. If you remember, Gomajul was the place where the Korean Mafia... Hung out. I say mafia. They weren't really a mafia. They were just like a gang. They hung out in uh, Yakuza 7. But this game takes place a couple years after Yakuza 7. And so, they're defunct. They don't exist anymore. Slayer's done another uh, tip. $1.15 says, how's the weather there currently? Currently in Singapore, it's hot and humid. You said it's been 90 degrees Fahrenheit, but the community makes it like, feel like 98. Here it is cool. Um, we are finally into our fall slash winter weather. Which means mostly clouds and rain almost every single day. Like, seriously, almost every single day here, it's pouring rain. It's, holy crap, NDO. Ladies and gentlemen, NDO just contributed a $100 tip to the stream. Which means Ralphie Phil just gets ho-ho-hoed and kicked in the face. Ho-ho-ho. Boom. <laughs> wow. So thank you very much, NDL. I appreciate that. Let me finish answering Slayer, and we'll update the leaderboard here. Um, yeah, we're full on into our, our fall weather, which means mostly... Yagamishi, it's me. I have an update for you. Oh, that's right. He's going to tell me I, to, I need to sneak in. Oh, crap! Controller batteries are low. Everything's happening at once! We already saw this last time, so hold on. I got to change out the controller battery, I got to answer Slayer, and I got to update the leaderboard, and we got to have a hat pull all at once. <laughs> How are we going to pull that off? Okay. Let's try it. First of all, let me switch it back. So, we're in the middle of our fall weather. Our fall weather season basically means it's cloudy all the time. It's rainy most of the time. It's cool weather. I like it because here, this is more typical weather. It's more like moderate weather here all the time. I don't like it when it's pouring rain, but I do like a nice light rain or just the clouds and the cool air. It's very nice and refreshing, especially as a streamer. Being in this office all day, if it's not like that outside, if it's sunny, it gets hot as hell in here. But on a day like today, it was cool, rainy. I had the air blowing in the window. The fans on. It feels great in here. It's nice and refreshing weather. So it's good weather here right now for me. Not for everyone. A lot of people who live here don't like this weather and wish that it was hotter all the time. I'm the opposite. I love the moderate weather, so I'm happy for it. So, okay. Let's swap batteries. Now, <laughs> we have a lot to do. It's raining troll tears right now, says Orange Cat. Maybe that's what it is outside. Maybe there's a troll in the sky crying down because someone contributed. So, Slayer, thank you for that tip. That gets us up to $4 in tips. NDL103 tipped 100 smackaronis. A ginormous contribution from NDO. Thank you, NDO, for supporting this playthrough. I really appreciate that because, as I said... What it seems like is the last few times that I played this game, it didn't really get much support. Then all of a sudden, last time, Slayer did a giant amount of support. And that was very nice. 
Uh, but I don't want people to think that it's always just going to be on Slayer, you know. And it's not. Tonight, I even said I'm not going to contribute that much. I was crazy last time. It was a one-time thing. I appreciate that. So, NDO, because of you, we have hit the Tier 2 rewards goal, which means number one is Gunner Glass this time. That's number one, okay? Number two, it means we got to pull for a hat. We're going to do that right now. So, which which hat is Gomejul best? Would it be the cowboy? Would it be the fake hair hat? Would it be the uh, Punisher beanie? Or would it be the uh, Santa hat? Why no pilot hat? I wore that earlier today. On the premiere stream of Metroid Dread, I wore the uh, that hat. And I don't want to wear it twice. I want to wear the same thing twice. So there you go. So thank you so much. Uh... NDO for the very generous contribution. And then on top of that, two dollars, Timmy two dollars, and said two dollars is tip two dollars. Thanks for the two dollars, two dollars. No, thanks for the two dollars, two dollars. So two dollars is a regular who usually comes by and tips two dollars. And when he tips the two dollars, I say thank you, two dollars for the two dollars. And it's a little confusing because two dollars and two dollars almost sounds like the same thing. So when I'm saying thanks, two dollars for the two dollars, so people think that I'm saying two dollars twice or I'm mispronouncing the word dollars as dollars. But I'm not. I love this E-Tank mug. Another gift from a fan. E-Tank mug many years ago. Still use it to this day. I love it. Thank you, $2, for the $2 tip. I appreciate that very much. Let's not get confused. Now, if you remember, we have to do this again where we have to sneak in. A little annoying because I've already done it. Um, but I guess we got to do it again. And then we can be in Go Mijul and then we can advance the fly. Here. Be careful here. Way to go. And you see, yeah. There's a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And this thing is, is super easy too. It's not difficult or anything. We just got to do this sequence again. Okay. Here we go. Heal up. Do I need? To oh shit! Look at my health. Well, I'm not healing now. Well, I guess I am. I have, like no health. I guess I must have gotten into a fight. Okay. Here we go. Yours is it's cold and snowy in Toronto, Canada. Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Slayer says, I envy those who live in Four Seasons weather. He does not. He only has tropical weather in Singapore. Wow. See, here's the thing. If you only have the same weather all the time, you're probably used to it, right? But you're right. You probably get bored of it. Here, we do we have Four Seasons? I mean, I'll be honest. Not really. We don't have much of a winter. Our winter is kind of almost exactly the same as our fall, with a slight difference where every once in a while we may... Have a little bit of snow. Oh, fucking balls! I got distracted talking about the weather. Um, usually we don't have much snow. If we do, it's very minimal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ah, Derek says the last retrospective I did was February. So there you go. The last retrospective was a very long time ago. I thought it was about a year, and I was actually correct. All right, we got the poll going for the hat, just so everyone knows. Please vote on it. Oh, shit. Okay. What am I supposed to do here? I'm confused. Last time, I thought it allowed me to throw another coin and distract the guy. They're not letting me do that this time. Oh, uh, what the hell do I do? This is stupid. I'm, sc I'm screwed up right now. I can't seem to do it. Look, if I even step out, he's going to see me. Told you. What do I do now? What is going on? I didn't do this last time. This sucks. I already fucking beat this. There, now it worked. Oh my god. How did that even make sense what just happened? I don't even know. Alright, at least I got by it. Jiggy Man thinks I'll be very impressed because they have patched the GTA Definitive Edition trilogy again to look much better now. That's cool. 
going to be playing the end of San Andreas and then Vice City later this week, so... Okay. Tsukumo, where should I go from here? Tommy Jewel proper seems that to door be right there. We already did saw this last time, so... Okay. This and uses the drone to distract them, right? Okay, that makes sense. Now we go in and we're done. Then we can continue from where we left off last time. Wow, it's close between the Santa Hat and the Punisher beanie tonight. It's back and forth, man. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> All right, made it without getting busted. <laughs> Not really. You did get busted. We saw it. So here we are. This is where we left off last time. So these technical difficulties, he can't talk to, to Tsukubo. He's looking for Kawano, but we don't know where he's going to be, and that's what we're doing right now. So here we go. Let's investigate. We can go up the stairs and look further down the alley. Anything down the alleyway. Who's that? Asshole. Just standing there. There's some more. At least these guys are masked up. They're following protocol. Alright. Alright, let's continue. It looks like now Santa Hat's in the lead. I'll give it another minute or two. Originally it was Punisher Beanie. Now it looks like Santa Hat's winning. I'm happy with either. So, Gomajul. To return to Gomajul. Just as messed up as it was in Yakuza 7. Kitakata <laughs> Sensei! Show yourself! Come on! Get your ass out here! Uh-oh. Relax with the yelling, will you? You're giving away our location. How am I supposed to relax? This shit's intense! Mm. It's very intense. I agree. I'm very excited. Shh! 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 Tsukiyura? Didn't Tsukumo-kun tell you I was on my way? The. Yeah. I suppose he did. Yagami-san. All these guys are RK. Does that mean RK beat the police to Kawana? No, not exactly. I just saw some cops let RK guys through. Oh, shit, but they're working together. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, that'd be crazy, wouldn't it? No, nope, they're working together. Yeah, we know that, that now. Was a mistake. Some cops are working with RK. But why? <laughs> Someone in authority on the force is trying to get rid of Kawana. So they want him to have an accident. What? <laughs> That's off the scale insane. Insane or not, I need to get to Kawana before RK or the cops do. You know where he is? I don't. Come to think of it, why would Kawana-san come to Komichu? Does he know someone here? Good question. Does he? Let's just focus on reaching the top of this place for now. It would be interesting if he did know Komichu someone here. in the Gomichu from Can't like Yakuza 7. Maybe we can ask them where Kawana is. Yeah, worth a shot. As long as we don't give ourselves away. Rogan says I should get an elf hat. So what I'm going to do is tomorrow, when I'm out, I'm going to look around for some stuff. See if I can find a new Christmas-themed hat. And also, I'm going to see if I can find a new Christmas-themed vest. Although, I did look last week when I was out, and I didn't see any vests anywhere. What I did see, of course, was the ugly Christmas sweaters. And I actually saw, oh, like, a suit, suit jackets. But I was like, I don't want to wear a fucking full-on suit jacket here in the office. You know, the vest is nice, but they, I haven't found any. So we'll see what I can find. So, guys, thank you so much. We have not have any Super Chat yet, but my God, the tips. $100 tip from NDO. A few more tips from people like Slayer and as well as Chicken Man. Thank you guys for the support so far tonight. So, the final goal is we get $150 of tips tonight. You guys get to pick a vest for me to wear as well. But I'm certainly not going to harp on it. I'm happy with the amount of support I've gotten so far. Thank you guys so much. Okay, let's do this. How is that, Derek? He says... Interesting ice cream is mom got salted egg yolk and boba like I know boba I've had boba in like a boba tea before it's like those little almost like tapioca right like little little jelly balls or whatever But um, I don't know what the hell salted yolk ice cream would taste like I've seen it though That's like a, a common thing like Asian food. They love to do like salted eggs and yolks and stuff 
in like it infections like a lot and ice cream. muscle to me, Yagami san. Yeah. But if that many are out searching, the silver lining is that they don't have a lead on Kawana. True. We'll just have to stay one step ahead of them then. I don't see anywhere else we can go. So let's go up those stairs. So we're literally going to go through the Gomi Jewel dungeon. That was the that was in Yakuza 7. It's going to be the same exact dungeon it looks like. Probably have, of course, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing um fights, hand-to-hand -hand fights while in Yakuza 7 you were doing turn-based combat. So interesting we'll be in the same dungeon, but the experience will be completely different fighting people. High purity lead, that's actually very very uh important for crafting for if I remember correctly the robots. Uh, so Slayer did a super chat and says this actually takes place one year after after Yakuza 7. Awesome. And then Brosuf did a super chat says, is this similar to Yakuza Like a Dragon? Well, culturally and the vibe of the game, yes. But the but the plot and characters are different and it's not turn based like Yakuza was. Um it's actually action, you know, real live time action combat, which is actually what Yakuza used to be. Basically, Yakuza evolved into this and then went off on its own tangent to become a turn-based RPG with Like a Dragon, so. Really? Derek says the smell was powerful and foul? Foul. The egg, the salted egg yolk tasted, smelled bad in the Looks ice like cream. The That's weird. We Yagami-san, we've got our cake coming in from below, too. Let's find another route on this floor. A Slayer is now correcting himself, saying it's actually two years. What the? Can't climb that. Suspicious. Can't go any higher on that. Well, down here. Hey. There we go, a ledge. Chicken Man says, How did my final Santa wasn't real? Was it an earth shaking experience? Well, I've told this story before. It was probably it was pretty bad actually, the way I found out. So one day I was home. I don't remember if it was a day off from school or work or, or like my mom was off from, from working or whatever, and I was home from school. But anyway. So we're home and we're watching like the Home Shopping Network or QVC or something together. My mom, my whole life, my mom has liked that stuff, okay? And we're watching, during the daytime hours, a show that's advertising like Christmas products, okay? Now, obviously, the target demographic for that is like stay-at-home moms, you know, older, older women. They're at home watching the Shopping Network. So that's kind of the topics they're talking about is like, oh, Christmas family experiences and things like that. Things that you would think that mothers or whatever would want to talk about. One of the on-air hosts literally says, Oh, wasn't it just a shame when your kids finally find out that Santa isn't real and, you know, that it, it sucks because the sparkle kind of leaves their eye when, it, when the holidays are around anymore. And I was like, what? I turned to my mom and she was like, Oh, no! Just like that. And she didn't say, oh, no. But you could see it in her face, too. Like, she was like, oh, crap, the jig is up. Because they blew it. They completely spoiled it. And I'm like, now, wait a minute. Do they not realize that kids sometimes are at home watching this with their parents like during the daytime especially younger kids too who don't have school or whatever you know that's kind of stupid that they did that on the air i guarantee you that host got in major trouble for it you can't say stuff like that on television like that you know what i mean so anyway that's how i found out shocking right like, it's like i watch a fucking home shopping network or qvc or one of those channels and that's how i found out santa wasn't real and it was funny because then i knew and when we had gone on christmas eve we went to my great uh, un aunt and uncle's house because they were kind of like my grandparents because my grandparents were always out of the picture when I was a kid um, and so my great uncle would dress up as Santa and hand out presents now when we were younger we didn't know that it wasn't really Santa we thought it was really Santa coming to give us presents on Christmas Eve we thought he was real okay um, but as we got older obviously the older kids know it's not real right well I was at the age I didn't know yet and that was the year that I'd seen the spoiler on the shopping channel and that year my mom grabs me and pulls me aside when we show up and she goes okay now listen i know that you know santa's not real anymore do not tell your cousins they don't know 
and you don't want, especially I, my, my cousin Kristen was like five years younger than me, and she's like, you don't want to spoil it for her because for her it's still a magical thing. Remember when you thought he was real, how, how cool it was and how, you know, so don't tell them. Let, you know, let them figure it out for themselves. Act like that your great uncle is really Santa like you always do. Uh, okay. <laughs> it was very odd. Let me tell you. Okay. Oh, here we go. Bonta says, my Santa review was awful. My release time church teacher told me in third grade. It was only four of us in our group. And she was like, I know you all know that Santa isn't real. And you didn't know. <laughs> Oops. Right? T. T. Holmes says, I found out outside of a Walmart. A very Walmart thing to happen. Oh, uh, who told you outside of Walmart? Some guy just walked up and said, Hey, kid, Santa's not real. Can I have some money? <laughs> wow. Holy shit. How old was I? See, I don't remember. I know I was I was younger. I wasn't, like, young young. I wasn't, like, four years old or nothing. I was probably, like, you know, ten, maybe? Maybe younger than that? I don't know. I actually don't know. I don't remember at all. I just know I wasn't young young. Because, like I said, my cousin was much younger than me at the time, and they didn't want to spoil it for her. So. What was worse, finding out Santa isn't real or wrestling is, is not real? I mean, Santa. Wrestling, who gives a fuck? <laughs> who cares? Guts says, Jingle All the Way is the only Christmas movie I respect besides Home Alone. <laughs> well, we've done it. Orange Cassis, some members of the chat didn't know Santa wasn't real until now. For those of you who are like five years old who shouldn't be here, I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry you just found out. Okay. T. Dot Holmes. Just a $25 tip and says, I hope you have a good day off tomorrow, Phil. Thank you, T. Dot Holmes. This is very generous of you. You were very generous, um, you know, previously this week. And now you're being very generous again tonight with another very generous tip. Thank you, T. Dot Holmes, very, very much for your, all of your support this week. And thank you for that. I will do my best to have a good day tomorrow. Actually, I don't know what my wife and I are doing tomorrow. We were talking about it. We may just have more of a stay-at-home day because we don't have a lot of money. And I have a lot of bills coming up. Like, I think it's like around the 10th. I have a ton of bills to clear. So, it might just be a more stay-at-home day. We'll see. We should still be fine. But. Okay. Let's continue. And yes, I love National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. All right. Let's continue because we're, we're, we're taking too long here. All right. I should be able to jump over to the side. Let's see if I can get past here. Looks like it's parkour. The parkour mechanics. The hardcore parkour. Yeah. We should be able to get up from here. Yeah. Now he's more agile than you are. There we go. <laughs> Fucking Spider-Man. This is she did in the first game. Damn. Wish I was that nimble. <gasps> oh my legs! Snaps his leg. Oh. Yeah, Rogue, no, so far, so good. We almost hit both tip goals today, which is nice, right? So it looks like we're not going that way. We're going a different way. Grab that item. Spider detective. Spider detective. Do the shimmy. Do that shimmy that they do in every video game. It's always the same sidestepping animation. Always. Here we go. What was that? Derek says he got a Klondike Boston Cream Donut Ice Cream. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Decadent shit. I don't eat that stuff no more. I'm too old for it, man. I can't eat that stuff. Oh, shit. Oh, God. No. <laughs> What happened? What the fuck happened? I didn't mean to do that. That was a complete accident. Oh my god, I completely blew a Yagami man. He snapped every limb. He's dead. He's like a piece of Yagami pancakes. <laughs> T. Dot Holmes says, I was going to recommend John Who Stranglehold for my Christmas marathon, but apparently it's impossible to get now. See, this is what some people have been talking about recently. This is why we need to get all these games digitally on a marketplace somewhere. Because. You know what I mean? For pros just posterity purposes, maintaining historic games accuracy and, and the fact that you want to have these games preserved. We shouldn't have games out there that are impossible to get, right? Just because, oh, only the disc is available. It's not digital anywhere. So how the fuck do you ever play it, right? The discs are going to wear out eventually, man. Even even the discs that are preserved, they're going to wear out. You need to have a way to freaking, uh, to maintain this stuff. And right now, there's no way to really maintain this shit. You know what I'm saying? This is not good. 
So how do I get over there? How do I miss this before? Maybe I need a better running start. Wait, there's an item there I missed. Oh, fuck it. Let's do it. Ready? That's how I was supposed to do it. Okay. So I'm being asked by Max Power, what did I end up thinking of Metroid uh, Dread? I loved it. You know, it plays like classic Metroid. It's what I expected. That's what I wanted. And that's what I got. There's a little bit of a twist there with the whole, uh, the, what do they call it? Um, I forgot what they're called. Emmys? Not Emmys. Something. Work, they, they basically act like the nemesis. That's, Yo, it's interesting. It's a little tense, but it's definitely you? interesting. Uh-oh. Huh? Komichu? Us? What's going on here, man? This place uh. is empty. Either way, would you? Yagami-san, they seem like R.K. I'd rather not have to bullshit them. So, take them down? Yeah. Time to fight these assholes. We'll do it snake style. Oh, look at this, a new animation. Oh, this is sick. Double fist. <laughs> Double fist punch, motherfucker! Whee! Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. And here we go, and squish. Ah. So, Sun Ramen did a super chat to Santa getting a PS5 this year. There's no, I don't think anyone's getting a PS5 this year. They don't exist. <laughs> they seriously don't fucking exist anywhere. Oh shit, no, I almost got <laughs> I tried to grab Sakira! I accidentally tried to grab him. I'm very sorry, sir. Oh shit! Here we go, counter hit. Drop him on his fucking head. Got him. Parried it. Nice. I tried to grab... I got so excited, I tried to grab Sugira. <laughs> I tried to slam my fucking teammate. Way too excited. Bonta, welcome to the stream, and thank you for being a standard ahead. supporter. Appreciate that, Bonta. There's a room on this side, too, though. Might be worth checking out. So we're 328. This is actually the most we've ever had. We had this earlier today, then we lost one. Now we got it back. So 328 members, the most we've ever had on DSP Gaming. Thank you all very, very much for the support. I appreciate that. So wait, there's two ways to go? According to this, if you take a look here, this might be a safe room. I see an S. It is. It's a save spot. That's interesting that they put a save spot in the middle of it. Stamina. Ooh. Ooh, stamina. <laughs> Ooh, delicious stomach. Alright, Slayer just did a super chat. Is Immortal Phoenix Rising a good game? Yes. Don't expect groundbreaking graphics, okay? Don't expect to get blown away by anything in the game. But the plot is good. The writing is very comedic and funny and interesting. It's I got a typical a typical open world formula, but I actually like the combat a lot. I actually feel the combat of the game is quite fun, especially when you unlock a lot of the abilities. Oh my god, Slayer, what happened to your name? It's all caps. Especially when you unlock a lot of the abilities in the game. The combat becomes way more complex and way more fun when you're doing these crazy juggle combos and shit on the big enemies. You're stunning them and stuff. It's actually quite good. Um, it was way better than I expected it to be, to be quite honest with you. I thought it was a much better game than, than even advertised. Um, but in, unfortunately, it's Ubisoft. And so many people crap all over Ubisoft stuff these days. Ah, oh, it's just typical Ubisoft open world. It actually wasn't. It was much better in my opinion. But anyway, um, anyway, it was a good game. I liked it. You might enjoy it, especially right now. It's probably discounted heavily, so I might want to give it a look. Um, so T. Dot Holmes just did another nineteen dollars. I'm tipping because Bonto was a man of his word and became a member. Oh, nice. I don't know what's going on with that. I missed out on that whole thing. But guess what, ladies and gentlemen, we hit the tips goal for tonight, which is absolutely outstanding. And I want to say thank you guys for your support in that regard. Uh, really nice of you to come out today. Was an incredibly supportive day. So thank you so much for that. Now we can just chill and relax. If you guys, hey, you guys want to contribute more tonight? By all means, thank you. But we, you know, we're good for the night. When it comes to rewards, we're gonna do a poll right now for a vest. So, which vest is Detective Best? We've got the the original beige, the red for festive red. Then we've got denim, and we've got gold, silver and gold for the holidays. Those will be the four that we'll have tonight. Why no platinum? Before someone asks, because we already did platinum earlier today. That's why. All right, and now, I believe there was a super chat that came in. 
from Only Iced Infinite and says, Hey, Phil. Good evening, Only Iced Infinite. How are you? Hope you're doing well. And uh, thank you for the super chat. Let's get you up on the leaderboard. Thank you all for your, your support tonight. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so. Nicely done. We saved up. We continue on. Now, wait a minute. Is it Staminon X, right? Do I, do I, could I use that? Yes. Ooh, Staminon. Ooh. Oh, Staminon. <laughs> I love that. Staminon. Now we can go up here. Cool. What game is Kat currently playing? Uh, Witcher 3. She's currently playing The Witcher 3. She just started, so she's only a few hours in. Um, likely tomorrow, like I said, tomorrow on our day off, since we don't really have a lot of money or much to do, uh, likely, well, outside of the things that I have to go out and do, like, like grocery shopping and, and uh, pet store supplies and stuff, we probably will stay home for a bit and I'll probably watch her play. I wish we'd had some sign of koana -san, but maybe we'll still get lucky? Are you ready to go, Yagami-san? No. Orange Cat asked, did I get any good Cyber Monday deals? Oh, yeah, dude. I totally, absolutely got this bit, this great deal. So get this. I, I logged into a browser. I put all my personal information in. All right. I gave him all my financial information. And I sent like $300 off to purchase something. It was great. I, I, I purchased health insurance for the month. I paid my health insurance bill. So there you go. Uh, very exciting. <clears throat> All right, people are voting right now for the vest. Jeez, so many questions tonight. Paul Rowley says, why is there no thanks button yet? I see that Komomo has one now. I gave him a thanks. Uh, I don't know. I have requested it. I actually, I put in a feedback request like two months ago saying, can I get a super thanks um, on my channel for the video, on-demand videos? And they still haven't really done anything. They didn't give it to me, so there's nothing I could do about it. I would love to get it, but uh, right now, it doesn't exist. I don't know why. Um, okay, let's continue. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Being that they asked that, it probably means there's going to be a lot of combat inside. Probably waves of combat and boss. Man, where is this fucking guy? This is the room we fought fucking... Forever. Well, I don't really want to spoil. Yeah. This is a major it's boss like fight that happened in this room here. in Yakuza 7. You think the cops got it wrong? Then what do we do? Keep looking? Is there a fucking point? Seems like Kawana-san's giving them a slip. What's the plan now? Let's find out what RK's gonna do when they catch Kiwana. Are they planning to kill him themselves? What, you gonna just stroll up and ask him? Well, I only count four of them. So, two each. Piece of cake. I guess. Okay, let's go. Carlos, Hello, I check every gentlemen. once in a while. The option a for Super Thanks is on a certain page. Huh? And on my what YouTube channel, you and it's just not enabled yet. You I check the all the time. Wow, well, they don't even recognize you, Yagami-san? Well, that's kind of sad. <laughs> What's going on here? Huh? Uh, Yagami-san? I don't think it's just two each anymore. Wait, what? Yagami! Hey! That's the detective from Kamurocho! A detective? Just get him! They're with Kitakata! Fuck yeah! Let's get it started! <laughs> ready to die. What the fuck is this guy wearing, by the way? <laughs> I've been waiting for this shit. A tie-dye shirt? Is that <laughs> you wearing a fucking tie-dye shirt? Let's go. Let's go. When I'm gonna do, you know, gang hijinks and gang fights, I always wear my tie-dye shirt, right? There we go. Hopefully I can kill like, multiple guys at once here. And it's time. Break dance fun. Oh yeah! By the way, I think I just received another very generous tip. Holy crap, and I don't know what's going on. The we're full, of, we're full of the festive spirit, I guess. Here we go again. Oh! Here it goes. Oh, who the fuck has a gun? Shit, someone has a gun to shoot me. Oh, there he is, the Shimoda. Fuck this guy. Bitch. Oh, so much for that. Nope, you can't hit me, bitch. Tiger fist. Tiger kicks of legend. Oh, shit, he interrupted me. Alright, this guy's annoying. He has a fucking knife. 
Oh, yes. Oh, oh, come on, come on. Oh, come on, the ninth. Got him. Interrupted him with this combo, but I'm almost out of health. Oh, yeah. Dude, he's got raspberry jelly squirting out of his mouth. Disgusting. Shit, I missed. This guy's terrified. He should be. So, DSP just tipped me $50. Thank you to whoever the heck that was. It wasn't me tipping myself. I appreciate that very much, guys. Thank you so much for the support tonight. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Is that all you got? I thought there were more of you guys. Let's not jinx it, man. <laughs> you guys came looking for Kuwana, right? The voting's very or close for the, ve the vest, so I'm going to let it go a little we longer. We just told to catch him. Uh, not sure what comes after that. You sure the plan wasn't to kill him? I said I don't know. Nah. Who gave the order here? Soma? It was Akusasan. Probably on Soma-san's orders, though. Hey, uh... Yagami-san? The heck? Hey, how come Ijincho has so many creepy masks? <laughs> I was just gonna ask you. Another group with creepy Kuan masks. Not here. Huh? That intel was fake. We were the ones who put it out. You live here? Then you must be Komichu. Are these the Gomeju? They're still here? Normally, it's us hiring the handyman. But this time, it was Kuana asking the favor. Huh. Huh? To put out false information? Yes. He said he wanted to see what kind of enemy he was dealing with. And how they'd respond to an eyewitness report. Seeing as how easy police info made its way to these thugs. I'd say he was wise to use caution. And now he knows what he needs to know. Were he any know. closer, he would have been ensnared by now. So Kawana's nearby, watching everything unfold as we speak? He's really in a Jincho, then? We'll have to clear the room to discuss that. <laughs> hey, why are you looking at me? Sorry. Nice of him to sit perfectly said, still. Kawana's return to Ijincho. There are benefits to being here that only he can exploit. Where's he hiding out? Under the protection of Tesso from the Yokohama Leomon. But you're cleared to see him. We already took care of that. Kawana actually said he'd meet us? Hmm. Come on. There's a way through the cops don't know. You can get out to the city from there. <laughs> That'd be helpful, thanks. Guess you're not so bad after all. Bear in mind. You may not leave alive if you come back. You were never welcome here. And never mind. <laughs> okay then. So Slayer to me, dollar fifteen says in Singapore, every citizen has a fund assigned, which is uh, added to the salary. They can have their retirement fund and medical fund for medical bills. Medical bills are also subsidized, so, so we don't need to pay a lot of money for a simple doctor's visit. I'm sure the Liu Ma will lead us to him. Listen. I know that healthcare is dramatically different outside of the United States, and I do not think that the United States does it in a very good way. way. I think that our way is pretty fucking stupid. If you're not rich, you essentially get the worst healthcare, even though it's free, it's terrible. If you're rich, you basically get the best healthcare, and you pay out the ass for it, but you don't care because you're rich. If you're middle class like me, you pay out the ass for healthcare, that's also terrible. So I get the worst of both. I have to pay for it, and it's bad. It's not like, oh, I pay for it, I get good health care. No, I pay for it, and it's bad health care. That's what I get. If I were rich, I could pay for good health care, but I'm not rich, so I can't get the best doctors or anything like that. Um, a perfect example is last year, I had a series of ear infections, okay? So after getting this ear infection like three or four times, I finally tell them I want to see a doctor. They say, no, you have to go to an emergency clinic first to get approval to see the doctor. So I have to wait like a month to do this. I go... The guy looks at my ear, he says, oh, you have an ear infection. I said, no shit. That's what I told you. So then he gives me the referral. The referral was for two and a half months more to see the doctor. By the time the time came, I couldn't go. I couldn't. I was too busy. And then after that, they wouldn't let me reschedule it. So I never went. <laughs> I never went to the doctor. Yeah. It's broken as fuck. It's terrible system. Okay. 
The red vest has won. Let's get the red vest. I'm happy about that. A nice festive red vest tonight. Let's do it. We haven't worn the red vest in a long time. Dude, I can't even remember the last time I wore it. All right. Well, guys, thank you so very much for tonight, for the support tonight, and happy holidays, man. That is awesome of you for being so nice and generous for me tonight. I really appreciate it, guys. I do. So thank you so much. Um, we have a nice chill night of story development now, right? Cool. Uh, Slayer did another dollar fifty tip. He says, here in Singapore, the funding is called CPF, Central Providence Fund. For working citizens, a portion of the salary is deducted to add into that fund, which is separated into the retirement fund, medical fund, and medical insurance, and, and also a subsidy. So basically what you're saying is you, you get a lot taken out of your pay, but it goes to good stuff, and then everything gets taken care of. Makes sense. Sir Mattis is upset with me. He says, just play the damn game. Okay, so Sir Mattis, what I'll do is I'll ignore my audience completely. Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> oh, what the frick? That was not the home row. Hold on a second. One of my hands. What is going on? Massness? Y'all, massness. <laughs> okay. Sir Madness, thanks for the super chat. All right. Let's 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 actually play the game. Okay, here we go. It so happens I've got a brother there named Tesso. A what? Now let's get there before Kawana changes his mind. Okay. So, look for Kawana and Gomeju. We finished that. Head to the Yokohama Lumang hideout. That's right, Tesso said that he's your bro the brother now, remember? That was just earlier on in the plot here. Grab some items. Uh, burp loudly and disgustingly. I'm very sorry, everyone. I apologize. So I'll do it again. Ooh, excuse me. <laughs> okay, the coffee. The coffee gets to me sometimes. All right. Maybe I'll wait. I gotta go warm or something. Oh, no, it's an empty bottle. <laughs> so, you Yagami Yanaki? Tesso san told me to let you in. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, Yagami Yanaki? Duh. <laughs> Will you be coming inside? No. That means Kawana's back there. Maybe I should prep before going in. No, I'm good. I didn't even take any, any damage really in that last fight. Sure. Let me pass. I, I'll just take one this healing one, item. Please. I'll be all right. It wasn't a big deal. <clears throat> okay. Okay. It's a lot of meat. Did you see that? It looks delicious. Bro! Hey, man. Welcome back, friends. Tesso Aniki? Do I have to call you that? <laughs> Take a seat. And you too, buddy. This will be fun. <laughs> Which of your names should we be using for you now? <laughs> Kiwana? Or do you prefer Kitakata Sensei? Kitakata is a name that's been all but murdered by society. And Ejincho, I'm just a merry old handyman Kiwana son. <laughs> if you ask the cops, you're the murder suspect Kitakata. After killing Sawa Sensei, you fled the scene. At least, that's the story the police top brass are passing down through the ranks. Now, why would they say something like that about you? Because they're assholes. Calm down, Yagami. How come you never relax? So Kawana hired you guys from the start, and you pretended to not know each other in front of me? If that's the case, you really went all out for me. That's right, earlier on, remember? Didn't I tell you? The Liumang accepts anonymous requests, too. Tesso didn't know I was the one who hired him. I suppose there's no point in hiding that now. That's just how it is. Nothing to get mad over, bro. You really aren't hiding anything? Did you tell him all you've done? He's a former high school teacher who's going around killing bullies. Can't be much more to hide than that. Think it'd be more convincing? <laughs> Honestly, I'm at a loss. I worked my ass off to get where you are. 
And I'm still trying to untangle the mess you've made of it. You've got my student helpers by the throats. So I'm really backed into a corner here. You mean the graduates from Kurokawa Academy? Like Mamiya-san? Very good, Sugiira-kun. So how about it? No reason for us to doubt each other's intentions, right? All the secrets are out in the open now. Fine. Then I'm gonna light up. <laughs> this game promotes smoking, I'm reporting it. You were just enough. over at Komiju, weren't you? RK was looking for me there. The police even lent them a hand. Yeah. Well, now I'm even more confused. I give up. Who in the world could be after me? Who has influence over both RK and the police? Care to venture a guess? They'd be the uneducated guesses of a handyman. You got any bright ideas yourself, Master Detective? I haven't confirmed it for sure yet, but I have a pretty good theory for you. Oh? Uh -huh. <laughs> Who? I just heard this from Detective Watanabe, the one's looking for Kawana. There it is. Reiko Kusumoto, Vice Minister of the Ministry of Health. She's Mitsuru Kusumoto's mother, your student from 13 years ago. <laughs> Wait, what? There's a chance she's the one trying to silence you. And public security is taking orders directly from her. Public security? A detective from Kanagawa PD told me. Public security is pinning you as Sawa-sensei's murderer. He was also told to back off RK. Public security is protecting RK. It would explain why they have free reign on Ijincho. Hey, back up. <clears throat> why does this Kusumoto lady want to silence Kuwana in the first place? Kuwana had his former students kidnap Shinya Kawai and Kamrocho five years ago. The same guy who pushed her son into jumping off a roof. Kawai was killed after that. Before you killed Kawai, you approached Reiko Kusumoto about the prospect of revenge, didn't you? Ahara told us that. Before taking revenge on a bully, you'd approach the family about it first. Hmm. Did you make the same offer to Reiko Kusumoto? What if I did? She's the vice minister of the Ministry of Health. And she's pretty popular. She's even cleaning up her predecessor's mess. If it were to surface that she agreed to a revenge killing, they'd have yet another massive scandal on their hands. And if you get to go down in cuffs instead of a body bag, that detail may just come out. Before that can happen, Reiko Kusumoto plans to have, have me silenced mm. and use public security to do it. Exactly. Except public security can't just go after you. So they subcontracted RK to do the dirty work. That would explain why public security is trying to cover for RK. I see. Well, the logic starts off soundly enough. Something wrong with it? Unfortunately, yes. Something does stick out. Okay. And what's that? I did, in fact, approach Kusumoto-san <clears throat> five years ago about taking revenge on Shinya Kawai. And just as you said, I used Mama Yakun and the others to kidnap Kawai. And? From that point on, Kusumoto-san knew I was directing <clears throat> Mama Yakun and the others. She'd seen their faces, knew their identities, everything. So, if Kusumoto-san wanted to go after me, Mama Yakun and the others would be first on the list. But the fact is, public security hasn't laid a finger on them, even now. Which means, Kusumoto-san isn't the one giving them orders. Interesting. So if Raiko Kusumoto was giving orders to public security, she would have just gotten to Kawana much quicker by going through his accomplices. Sure. Huh. That makes some sense. Hey, so sorry if this is off topic, but... What was Kusumoto-san doing when Shinya Kawai was killed five years back? She was standing right there with me. Afterwards, she took three days of PTO. And that was a first for her. Why? Shinya Kawai died at the hands of Kusumoto-san. She killed him? She wow. drove the knife into his chest personally. Oh, man. She took it slow, <clears throat> making sure he suffered the whole time. Wow. Just like Akihiro Ehara, she avenged her son with her own two hands. I admire her. She killed Kawai herself? The current vice minister of the Ministry of Health committed murder. If that's true, then she has to keep that hidden for a very long time. <laughs> Afterward, she told me she'd never wash the smell of his blood off her hands. Damn, man. I was the only one who knew that, by the way. 
The others have no idea. On that day five years ago, I sent them straight home after they brought me Kawai. And I was the only one with Kusumoto-san when she killed him. This sounds way too crazy to be real. Even so, the fact is Kusumoto-san hasn't betrayed me. So who the fuck Besides, is it then? I doubt the Vice <clears throat> Minister is powerful enough to order public security around. Then who is giving them their orders? Well, I'd say your theory's on the right track. I'm sure public security contracted RK. It lines up with what's happened so far. I imagine they're so persistent because they know I can be used against Kusumoto-san. Either way, whoever's pulling the strings is someone who'll benefit from your capture. So if it isn't Reiko Kusumoto, maybe it's one of her yeah, enemies? Yeah, used against her. An enemy? Yeah, like someone within the Ministry of Health. Or maybe even some kind of political rival. Nothing would be more valuable to them than dirt on Kusumoto, right? They're probably trying to take her down. Or... They could threaten and manipulate her as they see fit. Is that why public security has been taking action? If they wanted to take her down, they could have had the police investigate her fair and square. Whoever is behind RK and public security must be an enemy of Raiko Kusumoto. That seems to be the most logical train of right. thought. Kusumoto-san can walk away from the <clears throat> Ministry of Health anytime she wants. Plus, she has the public's support, especially with the younger crowds. All just more reasons for her to have enemies. I read some article about how even the Prime Minister has a hard time with her. Like, she'll get up in his face every time he signs an order. Dumbass loses so many arguments, he practically works for her now. So the Prime Minister is trying to find some dirt on Reiko Kusumoto? <laughs> He's just an example. Weren't you listening when we said Kusumoto-san has lots of enemies in her position? Hey, don't be a dick. <laughs> so whoever's behind this may have been looking for a weakness in Kusumoto-san for a while. They must have got their start after realizing Ehara's case was really about getting revenge on a bully. That puts Ehara and Reiko Kusumoto in the same boat, being that their only sons were bullying victims. And if they discovered that Kawai also vanished five years ago. Hmm. Regardless. That wouldn't account for the rest of the incidents where a bully ended up dead. You'd know. You're the one going up and down the whole country killing them off, aren't you? Kawhi makes number seven. Seven? Damn, man. It wouldn't take much to connect the dots. It leads straight to her. Reiko Kusumoto. Then they'd know that she was among the victims who got her revenge. Yeah. And then... To Ahara's case. The link between him and Kusumoto is clear as day now if you know what you're looking for. That link... Sawa-sensei. Took me a while, but I connected the two cases together myself. It was R.K. She never should have even been on their radar. In fact, they traced your name from her. Sawa-sensei knew. She suspected you were involved with the Mikoshiba murder in one way or another, right? You don't care. You see your killing spree on these former bullies like you're doing the country a service. In your eyes, this is vengeance. Actually, no. You'd call it justice, wouldn't you? Except... Sawa Sensei wouldn't have died if it was. Hmm, he's right. That was never my intent. She shouldn't have died. No. You don't get to just brush her off like that. Like an afterthought. You had to have known you'd go down for this eventually. And you're fine if all your old students like you and Mamiya go down with you. By then, why would you look back at your trail of blood? Why would you clean up all your carnage? It's not your problem, right? You move forward with one purpose. Send as many bullies to hell as you can. Beyond that, you don't give a shit what happens. Sawa Sensei died in tears. You didn't see what I saw. The fear she must have felt was still frozen on her face. You, Ahara, Riko Kusamoto, you're all murderers. And so far, all of you have gotten away with it. So why did Yoko Sawa end up having to pay the price? Tell me, will you even be able to look her in the eye when you die? 
I doubt it. That's gonna follow me well into the afterlife. So what now then? March to the cops and turn myself in. <laughs> you should. If you don't do exactly that, no one will know why she had to die. And that'll be the end of her story. Everyone will keep on dancing around her death. Even though she was completely innocent. Just like the cops are doing. Afraid I can't do that. If I turn myself in now, there's only one thing that happens. Public security takes me out. Yep, and we know that Worse, too. Reiko Kusumoto would be compromised. And that... I will never allow to happen. Of all the people involved in this, she deserves to walk free. Her revenge was justified. You think so? All she did was scrape off the scum of the earth that pushed her only son into an attempted suicide. She didn't sit around crying about a legal miscarriage. She took justice into her own hands. No one has any right to indict her for that. So don't go there. Nobody lays a finger on her. <laughs> hey, skinny ginger kid. Looks like this is gonna turn into a little more than a chat. <laughs> Good thinking. They're gonna fight again. So is your plan to kill me too? Anyone who interferes with your justice, we all get added to your body count, don't we? The punishment fits the crime. You're just blind. If you can't see that, then you can go to hell. Who oh boy? Stay out of my way. I have no health. Time to heal. Uh, T. Holmes is wondering how far I am in the school stories. Um, pretty far, but haven't finished the major ones. Like I still have Bite Club. I still have the Boxing Club. I still have to finish Robotics Club, even though we're near the end. Um, you know, we still got a ways to go. We're not done yet, so. <laughs> Oh, you fucker! You got a slippy fuck! He's blocking everything! Oh, he countered! He is snake style! He's using snake style! Yeah, he's parrying my moves! This is actually cool! He's using your own style against you. Lock this! You missed! God damn it! Dude, we're countering each other left and right! Did you see that? It's like counter, counter, counter. Counter. Alright, I gotta heal. Counter, 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 move, counter, counter. It's actually exciting. Nice, interrupted him. Beautiful. Sounds good, Tina Holmes. That for now, we're doing pretty good progress with the clubs, but we took a break to do story because I was actually working on, on side content. Oh no! Ah! Oh, oh my balls! Bring it up. Kawana, you piece of shit! You stepped right on my balls. You'll never counter this, bitch! Oh, yes! This should be it, actually. This should be the end of the fight, I think. Monster damage! Oh! I need, like, one more hit. Whoa, did you see that? Got him. Beautiful. I had just enough items, too. Just enough. Thank you, Slayer, for another tip. I will read that when we get a chance here, obviously. The reaction in the story here. How long has this been going now? <laughs> I lost track. <sighs> Bad asses. Calling? Nah. They're gonna tire out eventually. <sighs> Beating the shit out of each other is the way some people communicate. <sighs> <laughs> they knock each other out. Ooh, headbutt. Ooh. That's gotta hurt. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> there we go. Now let's stop them. Yeah, it's about that time. Uh, haven't you had enough yet? What? <laughs> it's time to give it a rest? Hell no. Stay out of our way. Uh, you're not looking so hot. Two dummies. Good evening, ghost. How you doing? Uh, you got lucky I stopped when I did, you know. I had a move lined up with your name on it. You're the one who got lucky as far as I'm concerned. I was about to kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking mess, guys. You ruined all our fucking crappy plastic chairs. How could you? Our Walmart chairs are like $4 each. <laughs> all right, so... Slayer did another dollar for the uh, tip and says, What do you think of Kawana's sense of justice in killing the bullies which the law didn't persecute? Do you think it's justified or is it someone taking matters into their own hands like the Punisher? You see, now here's the thing. He sees... It, it, it's, it's all about perspective. He sees himself as justified. He feels like because he was inactive back in the day, that's how this all started. That's how these bullies got away with it. That's how the original victim, which was one of his students, tried to commit suicide, became a vegetable. You know, he feels so much insane amount of guilt. That he's now turned his life into this this quest for vengeance. He thinks the legal system is a joke. He thinks that they don't take this stuff seriously, and he needs to find a way to stop it himself, right? Like he's he has a drive, an unstoppable drive, to do this. Um, however, as Yagami has said, which makes perfect sense, when you are doing this kind of stuff underhanded means against it's against the law. What he's doing, you know, he's not going the right, doing it the right way, going through the legal system, <clears throat> having the right people arrested. Instead, he's just punishing them himself. Sadly, when you use illegal means, it comes back to bite you. Look what happened to, to Sawa Sensei, right? Did she deserve it? No. She had nothing to do with the murders. Yet, here she is, the victim, right? Now, of course, you can argue, well, that's actually the gang. That's RK. I mean, yes and no. Because, yeah, it is RK who did that to Sawa Sensei, but RK is looking for Kawana. If they weren't looking for Kawana, they would have never went after Sawa Sensei. So, uh, Yagami's got a point, too. Do you let injustice happen if it's within your power to stop it do you continue to let injustice happen because you feel like things have to go through a certain way for everyone else around you to be safe or you say fuck it it's worth the collateral damage to make sure that justice is done and that the mis the in the, the mis the misdeeds don't continue i don't know if there's an answer i don't know if there is an answer what if what if harvey weinstein okay we had someone knew what he was doing but the law never caught up with him. He got away with it indefinitely for the rest of his life. What if someone had to take the law into their own hands and go through all his contacts and go through his little black book, killing each one of them until it finally goes to him in a bloody trail of death and finally at the top of a skyscraper, Harvey Weinstein is dangled by his intestines, hanging off the edge, and then it's a big gory ending of a movie or something, right? Is that better than Harvey Weinstein getting away with it forever? But what happens then if there's collateral damage? What if... A bunch of people die on the way there that are innocent, right? I don't know. I don't. I honestly don't know. No, I've never seen Veggie Tales. T. Holmes. I don't know. I don't know. I and you know, people will will argue different things. I am. By the way, if you guys didn't know, I am the Seattle Batman. Did you know that I'm Seattle Batman? <laughs> I go through the streets. I pick up the litter. And I said, this cup is not biodegradable. I punch the fucker in the face for drinking a coffee with that cup. That's right. <laughs> All right. Anyway, <laughs> let's continue, shall we? 